Hi parents, uh, thanks so much for coming. I'm Mr. Riedel and this is my classroom and welcome to Back to School Night. Uh, and I'm actually not talking to anybody right now in my classroom. The classroom is empty. I'm actually just talking to the camera right here uh, because this is a flipped Back to School Night video. And what that is is I'm doing my presentation right now to the camera so that, well for two reasons. The first reason is because if anybody happens to be absent on the night of back to school night, then they can watch this video instead that I've posted on YouTube. Uh, and the second reason is because I am kind of long-winded and uh, oftentimes during most back to school nights, I usually talk for the whole time and there's very little time for questions uh, and not much time for chit chat and conversation with the parents. And so what I am doing is I would like, I'm hoping that you are watching this video because I asked you and you're a parent of my students and you get to know a little bit about me. And then what you can do is bring your questions that you have after you watch this so that I can answer your questions and get to know you guys a little bit more and we can talk and go more in depth with the back to school night. So I'm excited about this. I hope it works well. I hope everybody can watch it. And um, here we go. So <clears throat> I usually like to start off my back to school night. Oh, and by the way, I might be looking around the room just because it's comfortable to let my eyes wander because I'm used to having a class full of kids here. But really, I'm just talking to the camera. Um, there's not really anybody here. This just comes naturally to look around the room. So pretending like there are parents here. Um, so I usually start off my back to school night presentation with a little technology fun thing uh, with that uh, explains my handout. So here, when you come on back to school night, you will receive one of these. And this is just a business card. And this is the only handout that I give on back to school night. And it's a QR code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast my screen for, to my phone. And so here's my phone. And what you can do is you can get a get an app. Uh, you can download a free app, and mine is called um, Barcode Scanner. And you can use the barcode scanner to scan the QR code. If you haven't done this, this is how you do it. So you just get the barcode scanner, and whatever's on my phone, you can see on the screen here. And so I take the back to school night handout QR code. It scans the QR code and then it provides a link to my website. And there's a back to school night page where you can uh, have all the information that you need on my website. So there's important parent info and then you can read more about that. Instead of giving you handouts, I figured I'll just give you a link to my website. Hopefully that's helpful, it's fun. I like to cast my screen sometimes when I'm doing apps with the students. Now you, I have a whole bunch of these, so you will get your own if you come to back to school night and then you can practice it yourself. So I hope you enjoyed that. All right, so, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into my presentation and I'm gonna explain a lot about who I am and my philosophy for teaching and why I'm really excited to have the opportunity to teach your kids this year, so. Uh, I was born in Portland, here in the city, and I was actually was born in St. Vincent's Hospital, and I was raised in Tigard and Beaverton. I graduated from Aloha High School, so I know the area pretty well. Um, in college, I went up to Seattle Pacific University up in Washington. I met my wife, Jen, up there, and we had classes together, and we got married in Seattle, and then we move back down because we wanted to, we decided that we wanted to settle down closer to my parents. So we moved to the east side uh, because that's where our church is and we and I ended up working for the YMCA doing after school care. I really had a passion for kids and that's when I decided to teach is because of the fact that I enjoyed working with the kids after school and so I realized that I want to do this all day long and get into the classroom. So and that's when I decided to go get my graduate degree at Concordia University, which is here in Portland. Uh, so uh, here's my family. 
some updated pictures for you. Jen is my wife, and my firstborn is Nolan. He is uh, about six and a half years old, and Delaney is right here. She is four and a half, and Eva is just turned two years old. Uh, this summer we had a birthday for her. And we also just recently got certified to be foster parents, and we're super excited about that. Um, we haven't got a call yet to have a child come into our home yet, but we really have a big heart. God laid it on our heart to help other kids that are in really tragic situations and um, just need a, a comforting home to stay in for a little while. And um, so it's mostly emergency care just for short term, but um, we're excited about that uh, and looking forward to welcoming the first child into our home. So whenever that happens, we're, we'll see. Um, so a little bit about my faith. I grew up in a Christian home and um, so my parents are believers and I still see them like every week. They're great babysitters and uh, Jesus changed my heart in high school. Um, I grew up as like pretty much a, a good boy for most of my schooling and in high school God really convicted me of pride and um, that I was just focused on following the rules and it wasn't um, so much about my heart as much as it was about following the rules. So he really made me, he really helped me realize that um, the heart is the most important thing. And uh, so he changed that in my life and I helped start a club on campus with a, a good friend of mine uh, at, on my high school campus. And it was a, a club, uh, kind of like a Bible study. And so that was really awesome. And then I went up to Seattle to college and I grew in my faith, um, attended church, got involved, learned a lot, uh, especially with all the different types of Christians up in Seattle. Uh, and so I learned, I really deepened my faith there. And then when I got married to Jen, we started a family down here. We moved back into East Portland and um, I just feel like such a heart for my family and for uh, my kids and wanting to be a good pastor to them, a good leader to them, a good father, uh, and a good husband to my wife. Um, we're sh uh, we go to Imago Dei Community, which is a church in Southeast, and we actually are in the East Side campus. There's two campuses. And the East Side campus is really close to where we live, and we have friends that go there, and um, even though it's really far away from the school, um, we live over there because of the fact that that's where our well, that's where our community is and, and um, where we in our neighborhood so uh, what I do on a weekly basis is I volunteer on in the production team at our church on Sunday mornings I uh, do slides uh, I run sound um, technology stuff as you can tell I like technology so that's a little bit about me um, education like I said SPU I got two degrees in biology and sociology. I wanted to do research. When I first started out, I was really in, interested in genetics. I loved science and I wanted to be a, a researcher, geneticist, and, uh, but that changed once I realized how isolated it can be in the biology lab because I worked as a work study job in a biology lab for four years. And then I realized that's just not for me. So I got a second major in sociology and that is when I um, just fell in love with people and I was fascinated with people groups and what makes them tick and eventually that led me to teaching and I've always loved kids I've served I've taught Sunday school since I was in high school um, then I, I went to Concordia University here in Portland to get my master's in teaching I taught eighth grade math and science uh, my first two years as I was in public schools and so I have a little bit of experience with public schools and um, I love math and science and so after that I realized oh, I like teaching fifth grade a little bit better eighth graders um, don't laugh at my jokes as often uh, they don't like my they roll their eyes at my goofiness so the fifth graders really enjoy my um, style of teaching a little bit better I think uh, so I've been at West Hills ever since then. Um, so a little bit about my Rito rules. So my Rito rules are up here, um, but that's off camera. So 
uh, you can read them right here. So I have three main rules which go which coincide with the school rules. And so real rule number one is be respectful. Uh, riddle rule number two is be responsible. And riddle rule number three, th those two are pretty straightforward, but the third rule is my own that I think is perfect for fifth grade because they are really rambunctious most of the time. Uh, the third rule is there's a time and place for having fun and goofing around. There's also a time and place for working hard and focusing. Know the difference and act accordingly. So that's something that uh, is really something that I'm passionate about with teaching is that I love having fun and I want the students to have fun. I want to get them up and moving around, I want them talking, I want them interacting with each other and having fun and goofing around sometimes, but there's also a time and place for sitting down and focusing at your table, working hard, being disciplined and diligent, and I want to work on them this year, work with them this year to understand the difference between the time for goofing off and the time for um, focusing and studying and working hard. So um, most of it has to do with me as the leader and I'm working really hard to try and demonstrate the fact that sometimes I do handstands in class, sometimes I walk in my hand, on my hands, uh, sometimes I fall down on the ground and get laughs because I'm doing some lesson. But other times I'm serious and I want them to listen and focus and so getting them to understand that is perfect for fifth grade I think because they're in that transitional time of life where it's hard for them to remember self-control. Alright, so some goals for the year uh, for fifth grade specifically. I want to prepare them for middle school, independence, and adolescence. So those are key things that are important in my mind for fifth grade that I think are important. Um, so especially the independence part, at this school I've noticed that there, are, uh, well there's a mixture of parents, but many of, uh, many parents really want to foster that independence, but it's difficult to do so. You know, as a parent myself, it's, I know it's hard to let go sometimes and let them learn on their own. So I wanna work with you in order to help develop that independence. And some of you, it might be easier than others. So um, hopefully, you know, we can work as a team. Uh, giving them an understanding of purpose in our class, school, and the world. So I have classroom jobs in my class, and that is something that I really want them to, um, to take to heart, is the fact that everybody ha plays a part in society, everybody plays a part in community, and um, understanding that purpose is something that I want to drive forward for them. Um, in our school, we play a part as leaders. We have reading buddies in first grade, so the fifth graders have their own reading buddy. So we're leaders among them, and also knowing their future as they go on to eighth grade as well. Um, and then the world. Uh, we, uh, one of the biggest things that I love in our um, class, what we do is uh, go out and have a service project. And we do it re regularly. There is a food pantry that is within walking distance from our school and it's called Neighborhood House. And I've partnered with them for the past few years and what I do is I take the students to Neighborhood House and we help them throughout the year and we go a total of six times, uh, not the whole class, but I split the class into halves and we go to neighborhood house and I show them what you know what it's like to work in a food pantry if they've never been there then it's a great learning experience for them and just de developing that understanding that we are here to at least I believe we're here to serve others and serve the world and serve our neighbors and you know spread Jesus' love to everybody so um, and also it's a good learning experience too it's not just about helping others, it's also about going and learning and educating them about what's going on in the neighborhood. So, and lastly, I want to instill in them skills and opportunities to give them future success. So this is the part that's mostly academic. Uh, I have a big heart for social goals and spiritual goals and stuff like that, but also academic goals. Um, these opportunities, these skills for math and science and you know reading and writing and all those, all the subjects throughout the school day, um, building on those academics and those opportunities will provide them skills to 
be great leaders for the f future and be great um, participants of society so that they can be successful because that's really ultimately what I want for them to be successful as they grow up so um, oh and which leads me to the next slide student success so in order to attain student, student success you and I must work as a team I plead that you and I have good converse, uh, communication I really uh, try hard to communicate with parents and um, sometimes I don't do my best so I'm I'm learning more every year and I hope that all of you will um, collaborate well with me as I teach your students here um, routines at home are very helpful uh, developing routines in the classroom is what I do uh, uh, developing routines at home hopefully is what you have been doing as they've been growing up I know some people have changes at home that can be difficult at times so um, if you need help with uh, starting routines uh, I'm happy to help so let me know uh, check on your child from afar Now, this is the key thing about uh, helping them to develop independence is not do everything for them you know so please don't assume that they don't have homework if they say that they don't have homework um, many parents in the past just assume oh okay I believe you uh, if you say you don't have any homework and then uh, parents can be surprised when they get a progress report and they're like whoa what's going on so um, I will try to communicate to you before that happens but um, but don't just assume that your kid is telling the truth. Sometimes they think that they don't have homework. Maybe they're not necessarily lying, but they think that they don't have homework. But if you just check in with them, I have a homework board on my website that you can check in with them and make sure that they get everything done. Um, and I can talk to you more about that later. But it's really um, helpful if you check on your child, but from afar you don't do everything for them, but also you don't let them do everything. Kind of just have a kind of a work as a team with your child and with me and also uh, be ready for them to make mistakes because it happens again and again and again no matter how old they are you know I hope that uh, what I am is honest with them if I make a mistake in class I own up to it and I tell them I apologize to them and I tell them how I'm gonna fix it and I hope that you are ready also for them to make mistakes too because a uh, big thing in my classroom is freedom uh, if you've seen any of, any of my other videos, like my classroom tour video, uh, I talk a lot about giving the students choices, especially with seating in the classroom. And so that's something that is really meaningful in my mind of what is important. And being prepared for changes too. The changes not only um, that are going to take place because it's a new classroom and they get lockers this year, which I'm sure they're really excited about. Um, but physical changes too. A lot of kids this age, fifth grade, sixth grade, are developing, you know, uh, hormones, and these hormones are firing, and pre-adolescence is happening, and puberty is shooting some of them sky high with the growth growth spurts, and so just be ready for anything. Uh, mood swings, you know, all this is happening. And if this is your first child, then you know, good luck to you as you progress through this stage of adolescence. Um, but if it's if you have already been if you've already gone through this with maybe your, your other kids if you have other kids then um, you know what I mean so um, so yeah but may, basically the key point that I want to make is that you and I um, need to collaborate and communicate with each other in order to be six, uh, allow the students to succeed um, so communication uh, like I said a parent questionnaire I provided an email to you so hopefully you got that uh, I've only received about six seven parents uh, that have filled out a parent questionnaire so please do that if you haven't readleteach.com classroom newsletters I are sent on Sunday afternoons that's my routine Sunday afternoons I work on my newsletter and send it out to parents uh, by email and most things that you need to know are on my website. Also, uh, we have a new fifth grade teacher next door. So, uh, Mrs. Hawkins is new to the building. She is not new to teaching fifth grade, but I really encourage you to go talk to her on back to school night as well. Just, you know, meet her and say hi. 
a familiar face because we do switch science and social studies. So I teach science for the entire fifth grade, both classes, and she teaches social studies for all, to all the fifth graders. So it's really... Okay, so battery just died, so I put a new battery in, and uh, let me pick up where I left off. Um, so yeah, I think I left off talking about Mrs. Hawkins and how she's our new fifth grade teacher, and she teaches social studies to your kids. So feel free to meet her on back to school night, introduce yourself, and um, she'd be happy to meet you. So um, I think that's all I wanted to say about communication. Basically, um, when you come on back to school night and I get to meet you in person, then please bring your questions so that we can have this be a time of um, uh, getting to know each other and you know conversation so that it's um, not just me talking the whole time. So bring your questions, I'd be happy, to, I'll probably show you my website too and give you a little bit of a rundown with that. But other than that, you know, I just want to meet you and get to know you. So, um, so yeah, br uh, write down any questions so you don't forget. All right, and last slide. This is our um, classroom verse that I have um, loved since my first day of teaching when I was a student teacher. And it's also in my classroom right here. I put it as a poster and I put it above the door. And, and so I'll go ahead and read it. Um, Psalm 139, one, verses 1, 2, 4, and 6. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. Behold, O oh Lord, you know it all. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain to it. And the reason I love this verse is the fact that you know, God is the ultimate knowledge base. Like, He is our creator. He knows everything. And we can't even attain to that. We can't even comprehend even a, a little tiny bit of an understanding of how what He knows. And as a teacher, that really humbles me because I am in front of your children all day long. And I get to be their leader. And I get to teach them. I get to educate them. I get to give them knowledge, right? And so it's really humbling to me to think about how we have an awesome God who knows everything in the universe and I just know a smidgen of that and I'm expected to do my best to teach your kids. It's just such a great honor that you would let your kids come into my classroom and let me educate them and give them knowledge because um, ultimately I believe that you know, all of our knowledge comes from the Lord, and He gives us our gifts, He gives us our talents, and it's just, this just verse gives me an awe of how big God is, and I just hope that I can be a, a fraction of that to your kids this year when I teach them. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to teach your kids, and welcome them into the classroom. I'll do my best, and um, I'm excited about this year, and I hope that you're excited to partner with me to uh, help your kids succeed. So thank you so much, and um, I'm excited to talk to you in person on the actual back-to-school night. So see you guys later. Have a good one.